Exodus chapter 4, please. Exodus chapter 4. This passage talks about Moses when he receives the call of God to deliver his people, Israel. However, Moses, he is unconfident, and he believes that he is not capable for the task. Because it's a great task. God told him that he's going to be basically freeing his people from the mighty empire of Egypt. Egypt was probably the most powerful empire that time. And Moses, he's going up against a whole empire. The world's most powerful king at that time. But God told him and gave him a task to do something. And he expected that out of Moses. He didn't look at his incapabilities. He didn't look at his slowness. He didn't think about your intelligence level is very low. He said, no, you are fit for the task. You need to do it. If I called you to do something, you just need to simply do it. In the day and age, we live at a time where we complicate things. And when scripture should be very simple and gives us a statement to do something, we don't accept it. We don't do it. Instead, we complicate the matter and we hesitate quite often. And that was Moses' problem. He hesitated at verse 10. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or made, make it the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O oh my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad." In his heart. Now, from all of these verses, it can just summarize to three words what God is telling Moses. Just do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So Moses, he always hesitates. He comes up with great excuses, good reasons, and incapable, uh, incapable scenarios that he brings up to the Lord. Right. But God didn't see all of that. Right. God didn't care all of that. God saw something in Moses that Moses didn't see. And God just simply told Moses, just do it. The problem with us nowadays, when we're given a task to do something for the Lord, it could be very simple. Just do it. Amen. Just do it. You know, don't hesitate. Don't debate. Don't think about, I got a million things or I'm too busy. I'm too sick. I'm too old. I'm too young. I can't do this. That's something that some other brother or sister should do and not me because I'm not qualified. Just do it. Wow. Just do it. But what causes us to hesitate and to hinder ourselves? I will be preaching on that. Just do it. Let's pray. Uh, let's pray. Father God, I pray that you'll fill within me the power of your Holy Spirit. Cleanse away my sins with your blood. Help me to preach what you want me to preach. Like Moses, I am slow of speech and slow of tongue, Father. But I've seen you use my mouth over and over again. So... I just entrust the rest in your hands. Will you speak to these people? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, the first point is the aversion. The aversion. In other words, it's a strong disdain. Look at verse 10. Verse 10. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent. Neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Notice that Moses has had a strong aversion to the calling of God. And he was bringing up his reasons. You know, I'm slow of speech, and I can't say the words rightly. I can't think real quick. I take my time, and there's other people out there that you can use God. There's a strong disdain there. To be God's mouthpiece, to be God's prophet. And God chose Moses out of everybody. No, I know who I chose. I know who I pick. You're going to be the one. But Moses hesitated. Why do you hesitate? The reason why we hesitate, if we're going to come to the heart of the matter, is because of our sin. 
There is a sin, plain and simple, and that's the reason why we cannot do the things of God. It's not that we can blame the environment. We cannot blame on how our flesh is built. To be plain and simple, God knows already about the environment. God already knows the things that's going on in your flesh. So when He gives you a calling, He's not going to give you a burden greater than you can bear. And when God tells you to do something, He expects you to do it. So the only thing that's hindering is you. You have a sin problem that's blocking you from doing the call of God. It could be your fear. Didn't you know fear is a sin? I know that we can get afraid to pass out even just a track to somebody. And that's why we would get so terrified to tell the gospel to somebody else on how to get saved. But you have to understand this. Fear is a sin, my friend. Fear is a sin. You need to hear that. You might say, why do I need to hear that? That's offensive. That's the problem with our culture and generation. We have become so sensitive that we are not told that that is a sin. Fear is a sin. God has given you a promise. He's given you courage. He's your all in all. And he can, you can do all things through Christ. So then take his promise and go through it. There are people who fear to uh, come to church because they don't want to be a part of a Bible-believing church. Why? Because I heard that it's some kind of weird, strange cult. I heard it's a strange church over there. You believe the King James Bible is the only word of God and that's why people are afraid to come to a Bible-believing church. You need to go. People are stuck online. They're used to an online world because they feared getting lied to so many times. You need to get over your fear. And if there's a Bible-believing church you can find near you, you need to go. You need to go. I have people here who drive an hour. I've got people here who drive two hours. I've got people here who drive over three hours. But they come because they need uh, they realize the need. They realize the need of it. People are afraid to come down on the altar. Why is there a fear? Do you have shame to confess openly before God? I want to commit my life to you. Who's afraid of doing that? The altar call is a great opportunity to do so. No, no, just, just do it. You know, when the sermon's over, just do it. Just walk down the aisle and come down on the altar. You know, people are afraid to shout because people might think that, like the song leader said, you're crazy. So what that the world thinks I'm crazy? If God gets the glory, if he's pleased out of that, it's worth being called crazy by the world. Give a shout out to the Lord. Say amen. Give him the glory. People are afraid to pray over their meals because what will people think about me? People are basically afraid when we come down to the matter to take a public stand for Jesus Christ in the eyes of the world. That's your fear. That's why you can't do the things of the Lord. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 15, 24, And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. You know why Saul lost his kingdom? He feared the people. He feared the people. And God said, that's why I have to take away the kingdom from you, Saul, and give it to Samuel. Don't be a Saul. Don't be a Saul. Give the track. Don't be a Saul. Take a public stand for Jesus. Don't be a Saul. Get down the altar and make a public confession before God. Don't be a Saul. Another reason is because of carnality. That's an, uh, another sin problem. The reason why you hesitate to do the things of the Lord is because you're just fleshly. And you're so much filled with the flesh, and the flesh has some issue with its sin, its attachment to the world, certain riches or people around them. And because of those factors, that's the reason why it's so hard for your flesh to do the work of God. You're just carnal, plain and simple. You need to get over your carnality and just do the work for God. Yeah. Don't let the world cause you to hesitate okay. to do the work of the Lord. Yeah, right. Don't let the people around you hinder you from doing the work of the Lord. Don't let your sin, where you're filled with so much carnality, slow you down from doing the task of the Lord. Don't let your riches, because you're so preoccupied and busy with those things and you want to take care of all those things, that's why you hesitate 
to lay them on the altar, to sacrifice and to accept the call of God. Don't be carnal. Don't let carnality be your hindrance. The Bible says, Romans chapter 8, verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The Bible says the carnal mind is enmity. It's at variance. It's against God's mind. You cannot do the things of God, notice, if carnality is there. Until carnality is out of the way, then you can do the things of God. But if you refuse to give up your carnality and it remains there, the Bible promises you cannot, you cannot do the things of God. Weariness is, an also, uh, weariness is another issue why we hesitate and we can't just do the things of the Lord. Let's be honest, it can be very hard. We get tired out. Some of you are going through problems financially, in the home, in the workplace, or your own health. I don't know what it is, but weariness gets us to slow down. When you're doing spiritual works for the Lord, it can be discouraging when people look down on you, when you get no approval, when you receive no encouragement, and people just won't listen to you. You still get small results. You get no fruit. You've been the labor and the ministry, and then the people don't seem to appreciate you. The people don't grow in numbers, and then people just walk away. When they get wearied out, you get wearied out too. And that's the reason why people don't do the things of God, and they hesitate to go to church because they're thinking, there's going to be a small group of people that day. They hesitate to go to church because I'm just too tired, so much work, and... I had problems going on yesterday. I had a big fight, and I can't just go to church. They'll say, I had a bad sleep. I had an awful dream because I ate the wrong type of food, and then now I'm just miserable. I don't want to go to church that day. They get weary and worn out. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, verse 3, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. You need to keep looking at Jesus Christ, how he endured, how he did not get weary on the cross. He just carried the cross. He didn't hesitate and go, this is too heavy, Lord. He said, no, just do it. Just get it over with. Just go through it. You need to tell yourself that. And don't be weary. If you're weary, let me give you good advice. Get it over with. Just do it. Then you can weary yourself out after that. Pride is a huge issue why we hesitate to do the things of the Lord. Can you help out with this thing in the ministry? Oh, no, I'm too good for that. Oh, I got other things. I'm other things that are more important than the work of the Lord? There are people who always uh, get stuck with their pride issues, and because of that, there is abuse amongst churches. And the Lord, believe it or not, it doesn't matter if you're a regular person or even a pastor, He will put you on a shelf. Okay. Okay. He can cast you aside and say, your ministry is done because of pride. Right. It's hard to, stoop, to uh, stoop down and to be patient and to show grace okay. and love and understanding toward another person. Why? Because you're obviously much better than that other person. Wow. And there's that hesitation in there. No, just do it. Show the love. Amen. Show the care. Show that you care. Just do it. Don't let... You're too good for that? Wow. What's the matter with you? That's pride. Yeah. That's prideful right there. There are people who get into fights and there's bitterness and there's anger and angst and tension. That has to be washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. People's got to humble themselves and then just say... I'm wrong, I accept it. Amen. You know, just reconcile. You know why people can't just do it? Oh, I can't, I can't. Why? Yeah. There's a hindrance there. Yeah. Your sin issue, pride. Because you're right, obviously. And the other person's wrong, obviously. Psalm chapter 10 and verse 4 says, The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. That's your problem. The reason why you can't do the things of the Lord is because your pride is in the way. And the reason why your pride is in the way where you can't reconcile, where you cannot stoop low to do a 
a low down task or a low down thing, the reason why you can't swallow up your shame, swallow up your guilt and uh, pride and then just say, hey, I'm wrong and then just admit that on the altar. The reason why you're too good for that and there's so much pride in you is because God is not in your thought, it's you. Plain and simple, God is not in your thought, it's you. If you put God in the matter, then filter out self. Self becomes filter out. And its perceptions of what you think is right even turns out, oh, it was misguided. It was misguided. I thought it was right, but it turned out I was in the wrong. Other reasons why there's an aversion where you cannot do the things of the Lord is because you despise to serve the Lord. You despise to serve the Lord. Because Bible reading is dreary. Praying is dreary. Getting rid of worldly things is dreary. No one likes it. They want to keep their sin, keep their worldly thing. No one wants to uh, dress their best when they go to church. This is just too much. There's a disdain for those things. Basically, when God wants the best out of you in your life, you don't want to do it. That's why you can't do it. Just do it. But you can't. Plain and simple, the reason why is you despise it. If that spite of yours is replaced, if that spite of yours is replaced by what's right and what's holy, and I want to do what's right and what's holy, then there is no hindrance there, see? There's nothing that will block you from doing the work of the Lord. You have to look at your heart and say, I wonder if it's because I hate God. That's why I can't do this. I hate to do, I hate to please my heavenly father. You should say that before you fall into the sin, before you hesitate to do the thing of the Lord and just say, you know, I just hate to do this for you, Lord. I just hate to please you, father. You have to be simple. You have to be honest about that. Leviticus chapter 26 verse 15 says, And if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant. That's the problem with the Jews. They despised his statutes, and that's why they're not able to do his commandments. You have to look at your heart. What is your sin? Hesitation don't just exist because you blame on the environment or your flesh. There is a sin factor there. And you have to discover your sin factor. Is it because I'm afraid? Is it because I'm just carnal? Is it because I'm just proud? Is it because I'm weary? Is it because I just have a spite for the things of God? You will always hesitate to do the work of the Lord if you will not confront your sin. If you will not accept your sin. If you will not recognize your sin. Otherwise, you can blame it on the worldly environment around you and how your flesh is built all you want. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The Bible gave you a solution on how to conquer the wrong thoughts and that's you're supposed to keep it captive and put it to the obedience of Christ. You know why you hesitate? You fail to follow that command from Scripture. Hesitation just don't come out. It comes from a thought. Hesitation comes from debating the temptation. See, you're thinking. You know, there shouldn't be a debate. There should, when the tempter comes out, there should be a rejection, not a debate. But your problem is you debate the temptation. Like the tempter saying, you know, ah, you're, you got this issue right here and this excuse right here. You got a very good reason for doing this. Oh, you're too weak to do this. And the tempter puts all these things in your mind. 
Isn't the sin really good? Doesn't it taste good? Doesn't it look good? It'll just feel better if you do this and just a little bit won't hurt. And then, you know, other people do it and, you know, they'll understand why you did it that day. And, you know, see, that's what temptation does. And you're entertaining the thought and then you debate with the temptation, but I got to do this for the Lord. And then the tempter goes, but this. Then you go, but this. And then the tempter goes, but this. And then you go, then what happens? That's called hesitation. Because you're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If God told you to read the Bible, just read the Bible for crying out loud. You don't have to debate 10 minutes with your mind that when should I read it or there's another time or when I feel like it. And the, the tempter and you go back and forth with bought this, bought that, bought this, bought that. Just do it. Amen. Read that book. Amen, amen. Read the book. Hesitation happens when you debate the temptation. Once you entertain and allow that temptation to come in you and you talk to the temptation, game over, you're done. Yeah, right. Game over, you're done. If the temptation comes, push it away and do it. Push it away and just do the work of the Lord. Don't think, just do it. Right. Don't think, just do it. Do the work of the Lord. Mark chapter 2, verse 2 says, And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. Now, isn't that amazing? In this passage, there was a whole bunch of people who wanted to hear Jesus preach. And the place was small. You couldn't cram in everybody, but people didn't care. They didn't care how uncomfortable, how inconvenient. Some people came a long ways. But they didn't care about that. They just crammed in anyways, and it was probably hot that day and stuffy with people and smelly, but they didn't care. They just crammed themselves in, made it manageable, and I just want to go to church that day and hear the preaching of the Word of God. That's all they had in their mind. We don't have that. If uh, we had issues like this, you wouldn't come to church today. If you had any one of these issues, you wouldn't come to church today. You might say, why is that? What's the difference with us and them? Why did those people have no hesitation and they just crammed themselves in? But why would we hesitate and say, well, I'm not sure if I should come to church or not? You know, what's the big difference? They had a strong desire to see Jesus. That's the reason why there was no hesitation. You ever seen anyone hesitate to do something if they had a strong love and desire for it? No, they just do it. They just go for it and say, I'm going to do this for the Lord. I'm going to do that for the Lord. Nothing slows them down. Nothing stops them. They just do it. Look, if you see, uh, if you see one of those delicious desserts in the line right there and you're going through the line, you don't hesitate and you go, well, um, I don't know. And if you really love that dessert, you take it. You take it and you eat it. You wrestle because of your, and other people wrestle because they're thinking about, oh, I got my health issue. Yeah. <laughs> but the point is, when there's something you have a strong desire or a love, people have a tendency to just do those things. As a matter of fact, when they have a tendency to do those things, it naturally turns into something where they don't have to just think it, they just do it. An addict is what he is or what she is because a constant habit of doing it over and over again because they have a strong desire for it, that it turns into normalcy, that they don't even think or debate about it, it just become a part of life, part of doing. Your problem is you don't have that for the things of the Lord. There's always a hesitation there. It's not something you naturally do. Some of you are at that point, which is great, where it's natural to you to pray first thing in the morning, where it's natural for you to read the Bible and not skip. It's natural for you to just go to church as soon as you wake up on Sunday morning. Praise the Lord for that. Let it become a habit. Just do it. Don't hesitate. Just do it. What's your aversion? What's your sin issue that you need to confront? That you need to open your eyes and see and 
finally say to yourself, I admit this is my sin problem. That's what's hindering me from serving God. A refusal to do that is already, I can tell you what your sin problem is. Pride. There you go. Second point, the act. The act. We're going to look at verse 11. Verse 11. The Bible reads, And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth, or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. After Moses gave his wonderful excuse why he is definitely not called to preach and anybody would understand, God's like, who created you? Just do it. That's his only answer. He didn't take time and try to understand what he's going through and what his good reasons are. He just said, no, just do it. And that's what you need is the act. The act. It's plainly revealed what your action is from hesitation. You know what the action is from your hesitation? If God told you, I want you to do this for me, and there's a hesitation in there, your action is already revealed. Your action is predicting, no, I can't do it. You don't say that. You don't say that. You don't think about that. But in reality, you already gave away your answer. It is, no, I cannot do it. That's your real action. Because if you look at Exodus chapter 4, verse 10 through 13, notice that Moses, he first hesitated, right? You know, at verse 10. And then you'll notice right here, God gives the answer and tells him, look, I'll take care of you, don't worry. Then notice at verse 13, he's saying, I don't want to go. Pick someone else. That's the truth, exactly. You hit the nail on the head. The truth comes out. When you're hesitating to do something for God, you just don't want to do it. You're just saying no. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Verse John chapter 3, verse 22 says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. You know why God answers prayers when you ask him? Because when you follow his commandments, when you follow his commandments well, he answers prayers well. So then, in our minds, it's pretty obvious why God would not answer your prayer. You're not keeping his commandments well. That's the reason why God's not answering your prayer. You ever got it on your mind that you always had a prayer request and you've asked people to pray about it and you prayed about it for years and it was an important need, an important request that you need God to answer, but God would not answer it? And then the tendency is to blame it on, well, you know, it's in God's timetable. The tendency is to blame it on God. You know, I just got to wait it out. God wants me to endure the trial. Maybe the reason why he's so slow to answer your prayer is because you're slow in your service to the Lord. I mean, it's fair, it's fair. Why would, if you please God slowly, shouldn't God please you slowly? Fair is fair. Maybe God has an hesitation issue like you do. If God asks something out of you to do something, just do it. Otherwise, God will give you the same treatment. God, I ask you to do this for me. And God will go, okay, well, I'm not sure because uh, I don't think it's the right time yet. You're not ready for it. And maybe I should take some time because, you know, you did the same thing to me too at that day. And, you know, how many times have I've asked you to do something, but you just took your time. I think I'll just take my sweet time too. The action is revealed. The action is revealed from hesitation. You don't want that in your life. Imagine, imagine every prayer request you give, God starts answering now. And not just answer, but answer it like promptly, like really well. Why? Because you answer him promptly and really well when he asks you to do something for him. Let's see how your prayer life might change after that. Let's see how your life would change after that. Let's see those prayer requests knocked out. Why? Because someone is doing what he or she is supposed to do. Good. 
You ever wonder why prayer requests still remain there for a long time? There are people who are not doing their part for the Lord, and maybe that's the reason why the unspoken has remained an unspoken for crying long years of pain. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8 says, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. You know what that verse says? In order not to be attacked, because we're part of the day, we need to put that breastplate. We need to arm ourselves. We need to put on the armor. If you don't do it, then what's going to happen? The enemy is going to kill you. The enemy is going to kill you. Let me ask you a question. You ever seen in the middle of war, in the middle of a battlefield, where the enemy is shooting at you, did you ever see a soldier take his sweet time and maybe I should put on this helmet? I don't know. You know, I got I to gotta tie it right. It's just not the right size. It's uncomfortable, inconvenient for me. And the knot is not just tied right. So it doesn't look pretty. Because it's not tied right, I don't like this helmet. I quit. I'm not going to take this helmet anymore. I'm going to take the next helmet that would have a nicer tie around the noose. You ever seen someone do that? No. I'll tell you what they do. They don't care if it looks crummy or if it's ugly or if it's uncomfortable. When the enemy is attacking, they just go, put it on, fool. Your head's going to get shot. But that's what people are doing with the helmet. Oh, this church, you know, is not as pretty as I want it to be. And it's uncomfortable, inconvenient. And, you know, I mean, it's not that lovely. They don't really love each other. It's so crude, rude, and, you know, they got this issue, that issue. And it just doesn't tie real right for me. Okay. That's your problem. And right now, you have no idea. It's been weeks. It's been so many services. And the devil, every second, has been shooting you over and over and over again. And you're getting killed on the battlefield. Uh, that's good. That's good. Hesitation will get you killed. Okay. Hesitation right. will get you killed. Just do it. There's a million excuses, but these excuses, notice, don't really ma won't matter. The person doesn't think a million excuses when putting on the helmet. They don't matter to him when he's looking at the battlefield, when he's looking at his life and saying, I'm going to get shot, I'm going to get killed, I need to save myself. Yes, yes. That's the problem with people nowadays. You don't want to save your life. There are people who say, no, 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 I want my life to be saved. No, you don't. If you want your life to be saved, you won't care about the million complaints and griefs and excuses and reasons. They mean absolutely nothing to you. When I'm about to get shot, I need to put on my helmet. I need to just do it. Problem, I mean, you're getting killed, aren't you? The enemy is laughing and killing you over and over again. People, I mean, let's be honest. I'm very certain that not all of you have a perfect life. Not all of you have zero suffering. From my experience and the experience I come through with many people, everyone goes through some sort of suffering in life, some sort of hardship. That's just common. That's just plain. So then you're getting killed, aren't you? You're suffering, aren't you? What's your problem? Just do the task that the Lord called you to do. Just do it. And forget all those griefs and those complaints and those excuses. Just do the work of the Lord because you're getting shot and killed. But when you hesitate, you've opened up an opportunity for the devil to attack. How long has your hesitation been? It's not just, uh, you know, you don't hesitate for five seconds. You don't even hesitate for one hour. You don't hesitate for one day. Oh, should I do the work of the Lord or I shouldn't? Oh, maybe I should get right with God. No, I shouldn't get right with God. Maybe I should change. No, I shouldn't change this. Or which I, No, no. You take weeks to months to years. Now, that's plenty of time for the devil to nuke you 100 times over and kill you. Some of you are just dying. 
And you need to finally get back up and do the task. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 7, it says, Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. God says, when I called you to do something, when I commanded you to do something, don't even go to the right or to the left. Just do it. Amen. Do exactly what I told you to do and you will be blessed. I mean, think about it. You know what our problem is? Why do you hesitate to do what God strictly commanded you to do? You know what the worst case scenario is if you're going to do it? Why don't you just do it? Why is there hesitation? Well, I'm afraid of something, or you're too proud about it, or there's a disdain about it. Why are you hesitating to do it? I mean, the, the worst case scenario, if you were to do it, is to get gold, silver, precious stones, crowns, and the pleasure of God, and His plan at work, and avoiding the consequence of sin. That's the very worst case scenario. So why do you hesitate, huh? Why do you hesitate? That's a very worst case scenario. Oh, I don't want to do it because, because what? Yeah. Because of what? Oh, I got a piece of gold at the judgment seat of Christ. whoop de doo Oh, I made God happy. whoop de doo Oh, I see God finally blessing my life. Physically even. God healing some things in my life. Finally, I see that. whoop de doo Oh, I shouldn't have done it. I should have hesitated. I should have lingered. And I should have thought about it carefully more. I should have just not done it. Just do it, huh? I mean, worst case scenario is God finally blessing your life. But He's so slow to bless you because you're so slow to serve Him. Look at verse 13 through 14. 13 through 14. And he said, O my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well, and also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee, and when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. Now, Notice that Moses, because of his hesitation, the Lord said, well, I understand, Moses, and uh, so you can take your sweet time and let's let it go. No, the Lord got angry. Yeah. The Lord got angry. Now, notice how many times Moses hesitated. Verse 10 through 11, he hesitated, right? Verse 10, he hesitated. Then he hesitated again at verse 12 and verse 13. He hesitated again at chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. You'll notice that, right? He says, Lord, they're not going to hear me. <laughs> then he hesitates again at, uh, I mean, just stop. Then finally the Lord blew up at verse 13 and 14. Just say, just do it! You have to understand this. Yes, we serve a loving, patient God. He's got to be patient to put up with mankind's yeah, right. foolishness for 2,000 years, amen? But my goodness, you got to be crazy to think that God will never be upset with you. You got to be crazy to think that. That's just normal in everyday life. You ever had a kid, you know, who just yeah. keep doing the same annoying thing and you as a parent told him, don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You think that can go on forever or you're going to, and you will have zero anger and full empathy and understanding of the child. You're going to go, ah! You're going to go, ah! You're going to get upset, right? Now think about this. What do you think the Lord will do? He is, I mean, you are created from him. God created mankind where we're so much alike the Lord, where we, hear, we share a lot of the similar personal characteristics and attributes, you got to be crazy to think that God is not a person with feelings and emotions. Yeah, He's going to get upset. 
Think about it. How many times have you hesitated and just made the Lord upset with you? That's one thing you don't want to live in, is under a time when God is just cranky with you. Oh God, I have a prayer request with, and God's like, don't give me that when I told you to do this. You didn't even do that with me. What do you think God's going to do with you? That's something sober and serious to think about. We don't think about that. God is angry with me. God is angry with me. In 1 Kings chapter 20, turn over there. This is an interesting passage. Look at 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 35 through 36. The Lord's, Lord is not just telling you to do things over and over and over again. One day, it's going to run out and God had enough of telling you and warning you and then telling you and warning you, telling you and warning you. And finally, he's going to call it quits. And then he's going to let the hammer come down. If someone did it five times to me with hesitation, it would just go, ah. Oh. But imagine God when he already put up months to years with you by now. Look at uh, 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 35. And a certain man of the sons of the prophets said unto his neighbor in the word of the Lord, Smite me, I pray thee. And the man refused to smite him. I would too. If one person went up to me and said, hey, smite me, you know, hit me, you know, hit me in the face, I would go, I ain't going to hit you. Right? I would too. All right? Now look at this. This is pretty serious. Verse 36, Then said he unto him, Because thou hast not obeyed the voice of the Lord, behold, as soon as thou art departed from me, a lion shall slay thee. And as soon as he was departed from him, a lion found him and slew him. Okay, that's pretty scary, right? Why? He hesitated. He hesitated to punch him. And notice that God wasn't like, well, I understand it. No, God said, this is my word. I want you to do it. And then he died because he didn't follow the word of the Lord. Do you realize this is, we've been so brainwashed in this generation now. We don't realize this. Do you realize you're following the word of the Lord? Okay. Isn't that serious? Yes. The word of the Lord? Isn't that a heavy weight? And then we are too busy to ask God questions. Why, Lord? Why did this happen? Why am I going through this? What in the world? How well have you followed the word of the Lord then? The word of the Lord has such heavy weight that it demands, it demands obedience, not hesitancy. Why? Because hesitancy can cost you something precious. Hesitation will cost you something precious. And you don't want to lose it. You lost too much already. In this sin-stricken world where they have disobeyed the Lord too much, we're already suffering too much, don't you think so? Don't you think you're suffering too much already? You don't need to amp it up more. You don't need to amp it up more. You can maintain some precious things in your life, what you have. But that comes with obedience, not hesitation. Think about how many times in your, think about your past now. How many times your hesitation, your refusal, to follow God's way of doing things has affected your health, has affected your mental peace and stability, and even your family. Why? I'm not ready to do that work of the Lord, but years pass by. You grow up, you get married, you get kids, they have grandkids. By that time, it's too late. You have to start something now. You can't hesitate. You're going to cost something precious in your life. Now's the time to get right with God. Now's the time to forsake this thing. Now's the time to change yourself. It's not a time of hesitation. You're just counting the cost higher as every day to year passed by. You're just building up that cost more. 
And it will one day come down on you on all fours and it will hit you hard. Genesis chapter 19, verse 16 says, And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. Notice that Lot, he didn't have to pay the cost even when he hesitated. You might go, ooh, that's what I want. You might go, because I hesitate a lot and I don't want to pay the price. How do I do that? You know how you get that? You get the Lord to force you. Notice that Lot, he hesitated. Well, I don't think I should get out of the city. The city means so much. God's about to send fire and brimstone for crying out loud. He's angry. That's not a time of hesitation. But Lot was hesitating. And you know what God did? He had two angels grab his hand, force him out of the city. What's my point here? You need God to force you. You need God to force you. That way, you can be more helped. But see, people don't want that. People want to do things their own way, their own way of doing things, their own time, their own comfort level, their own timing and when to do. When you do it like that, you're just hesitating. You're just hesitating. Get the, you need to have some little bit of force in you. And maybe the Lord can help you with that. Maybe what you need is, if you have a hesitation problem and you don't want to count the cost, then maybe you should come down on the altar and say, God, I need you to force it out of me. Yeah. Do you ever wonder why trials happen? It's the only thing that forces you out okay. of your comfort zone and to make the change that you were too blind to see for a long time. You need the Lord to force it out of you, maybe. And it is his mercy. Isn't that his mercy that he dragged them out of the city? It is the Lord's mercy. He's going to drag you out of the destruction that can happen to you any moment due to your hesitation. Maybe you need the Lord's mercy. You need God. Give me mercy. You need to force it out of me. If you don't want to, then hesitate. And count the cost. There was a student in the Jefferson uh, Medical College, and his name was Arnott Walker. He got under conviction when he heard the preaching, do thy diligence to come before winter. And he realized there's not much time. I got to be diligent. Do the things of the Lord. So he decided after a long time, after not being with his mother, I had better write a letter to my mom. He wrote a letter to his mom, told her how grateful he was for her strong Christian influence and how much he helped her. Two days later, while he was in class, uh, this was a long time ago, so a telegram came to him and said, your mother is critically ill. He was shocked. He immediately ran to his home to see his dying mother, before it was too late. He rushed over. She died. But when he went to see his mom, what was underneath his mother's pillow was his letter. He was happy. His love reached her right before she died. He would have never seen he would have never known his mother to smile, to be happy over his letter if he took a few more days to write the letter and send it to her. You could be that person who is about to lose your mother, so to speak, because just a couple more days of hesitation. There are too many precious things in life that God can give to you that you do have, but the things of this world, they come and they go, don't they? Everything is temporary in life. How many opportunities have you missed out 
because of hesitation. How many blessings of God have you missed out because of your hesitation? How many open doors has God opened so that you can do something for Him has closed because of your hesitation? You have lost your mother. You have lost your mother. And she died and she's gone because you failed. You failed to write that letter, to stop your hesitation, to just do it. Just do it. Before you lose your next mother, just do it. Just do it. Come down on the altar. Every head bow and every eye shut.